Hi folks, this is Tristan from the School of Synthesis, here with a quick little video to look at some of the ways in which you can use some of Ableton Live 12's new MIDI editing tools, that includes some of the generative tools and the MIDI transformation tools, in conjunction with a third-party plugin such as Scalar 2, which is a very popular music theory slash composition tool. I'll be using it to help me come up with a chord progression and help with some of the rhythms, which I'm going to further embellish using these new MIDI tools in Live 12. But let's start off by creating a drum part. First of all, I'm going to bring a drum kit into my live set. Now we can click on drums and filter by different types of drum kits, but I'm going to search for the one I'm after, which is called Coral. This is part of the Ableton Live Core library. Here it is, I'm going to drag it into my first MIDI track here. So in previous versions of Ableton Live, to create an original MIDI drum pattern, we really had to program it ourselves, either using the mouse or a MIDI controller of some kind. But there are some great new tools in Live 12 to help us with that process. First of all, let's make a new clip by double clicking in an empty clip slot. And down here in Clip View, we can select the Generative Tools tab. And the tool which is selected by default is the Rhythm tool, which is perfect for creating original drum patterns. Now we start off by selecting a drum element we'd like to sequence. I like to start with the hi-hat for whatever reason. Let's select the closed hi-hat. And you can see it's already created for us a pretty basic pattern. Now we can change this by choosing a different step duration. Let's go to sixteenths. And also changing the number of steps. Now on the very far left, we'll just get a straight series of sixteenth notes. Or as we increase the steps parameter, we get a more intricate pattern or different combination of sixteenths. And we can play around with different pattern presets. As well as adjusting the density of notes. Okay, that sounds pretty good. Now we could certainly repeat the same process for the kick drum and the snare, but I've got a basic idea of how I'd like it to go, so it's probably a bit faster just to draw in the notes. So I'm going to press B to go into the drawing tool mode, and then just add a series of kick drums and snare drums. Okay, let's have a listen to that. Sounding good, I might bring down my tempo a little bit. Now there's another great tool, part of Live 12, which is part of drum racks themselves. So let's go back to Device View. And at the top of our drum rack, there's a new option here called Show Hide Similar Sample Swap Buttons. When we click that, we can see that each pad gets its own left and right buttons. And we can use them to cycle through some similar sounding samples. So it's a really quick way to audition some different drum elements. I'm just going to cycle through some different hi-hats and snares. Okay, that sounds good. They're a bit snappier, a bit tighter sounding. So, now that we've got a basic drum pattern programmed, let's move on to the more melodic elements. And to help with that process, I'm going to use Plugin Boutique's Scalar 2 plugin. I've got it as part of my favorites collection here. Let me just drag Scalar 2 into a new MIDI track here. Okay, so Scalar 2 is great for creating an original chord progression from scratch, as well as coming up with different melodies and bass lines. And we can browse through scales and see the associated chords, and create new chord progressions from them. But in the interest of time here, I'm going to use one of the preset chord progressions, which is part of the song section. And I'm quite fond of this J-pop chord progression number one. There are some great sounding chords here. Okay, I'm just going to take a couple of these chords, add them to my pattern down the bottom here. And let's see how that sounds. Okay, sounded good. I might just increase the chord duration to slow that progression down a little bit so each chord lasts for a bit longer. All right, that sounded good. To make it a bit more interesting, I'm gonna add a rhythm. So I'm gonna turn on the performance mode here and I'm gonna choose the rhythms and let's go with common rhythm number three. That sounded good. Now I'm going to drag that pattern into my clip slot on track two. All right, so now we have that chord progression and the rhythms as a 
MIDI clip. Now there's all sorts of things we can do to fine tune and tweak this rhythm. And to do that, I like to use one of the MIDI transformation tools called Time Warp. And instead of applying this to all of my MIDI notes, I'm just gonna do this in pairs of notes. For example, these two chords here. Let me just loop the first bar so we can hear what's happening. Okay, with this pair of chords selected, I can just adjust these time warp parameters to change their relative durations. Okay, this sounds good. Just make that second chord a little bit shorter. And that should just spice things up a little bit. So it's a bit more rhythmic variation to what I originally had. Okay, I might do that same thing to this pair of chords as well. Make the first one a little bit shorter. Great, that's looking pretty good. Nice, I like the sound of that. Okay, at this point in time, I'm gonna keep this MIDI clip here as a reference, but I'm gonna disable the Scalar 2 track and create a new instrument on a new MIDI track. And the instrument I'm gonna use for this is Meld, which is one of the new instruments included with Live 12. So let's find it, here it is Meld, and let's browse through some of the presets. And we can filter these presets by type if we know the sort of sound we're after. I'm going for more of a piano keys type of sound, so let's select piano keys. And I'm quite fond of this Flab preset. Let's have a listen to that. Okay, that sounds pretty good. I'm gonna drag that preset into my blank space here to create a new MIDI track. And now I'm gonna copy my MIDI clip from my Scalar track over to this new instrument track. I can do that by holding the Option key on my keyboard while I drag. And now here's what that same MIDI clip sounds like, but being played by this new Flab preset in Meld. Great, sounds pretty good. However, I can tweak this a little bit to make it a bit more interesting. So back in my MIDI transformation tools tab, I'm gonna select the strum tool. And just by adjusting this parameter here, I can make all the notes in each chord slightly offset. So that it sounds more like a guitarist strumming through a series of strings. Just gives it a bit more character. I can change the tension of the strum as well to give it a bit of a curve. Great, just sounds a little bit more interesting this way. Okay, now that I have two tracks ready to go, I might work on a bass part as well. So to create my bass part, I might go back to this meld instrument again. And again, browsing through the presets, this time I'll change my filter from piano and keys presets to bass presets. So now we're only looking at bass presets from this meld instrument. Okay, I think this basic preset works fairly well. Let's add that to a new MIDI track. And to get us started, I can just drag that same MIDI clip from my scalar track over to my bass track. And even though we have a series of chords, meld is only gonna play one note at a time because the keys preset we added to this track has meld in polyphonic mode, so it can play more than one note at a time. However, this bass preset we just used puts it into monophonic mode. So even though we have chords, it's only gonna play one of the notes from that chord. Okay, so that's already working quite well. I might just make some tweaks to this instrument to knock it down one octave. Okay, that sounded pretty good. So currently we're only hearing the lowest note from each of these chords. However, I can still utilize some of the extra notes in the chord just to spice up the bass line a little bit. For example, one approach could be to use some of the new MIDI probability tools. I'm just gonna expand this bottom section and show the chance lane. Now what we can do is we can take one of these chords, for example, this chord here, and in my chance lane, I can put them into the play one group. 
This will group all these notes together, but whenever it gets to this chord, it's going to select one random note from this chord. So hopefully we'll hear a different note every time we get to this part in the progression, but it will always be one note from this chord. And I can do the same thing to this last chord here. Okay, let's have a listen to that now. Okay, so some of these chords are still creating a little bit of confusion even when I'm not using the probability tool. So I'm just gonna quickly go through and remove some of the notes which I definitely don't wanna hear. I'm just pressing the zero key on the keyboard to mute the notes. Okay, that should be a little more predictable now. Okay, so another option we have to potentially make this bass line more interesting is to, instead of just choosing one random note from each of these chords, would be to play the entire chord, but as an arpeggiated pattern. So I break the chord up into a series of individual notes. So to do that, let's just ungroup these notes to take them out of these probability groups. And then let's select one of these chords and switch over to the arpeggiate transform tool. Now I'm gonna turn off the scale mode so that it doesn't modify my notes at all. And I'm gonna choose the 16th note right to break that chord up into a series of 16th notes. And let's do the same for the second chord here. All right, let's hear how that sounds. Okay, that sounds interesting. Let's listen to that in context with the rest of the tracks. Okay, that's sounding good. Now I think I need at least one more melodic element in this song. So I'm gonna go back to my meld instrument and choose a different preset for a new MIDI track. This time, instead of looking at bass presets, I'll look at lead presets. So there are some really nice sounds here. Let's listen to a few of them. I think this one sounds pretty good. Let's add that to a new track. And once again, I'm going to take my MIDI clip from my Scala track and copy that across to my new lead track. Now at the moment, I just have a series of chords. However, I might turn this into an arpeggiated line. Now I could use the arpeggiate transform tool or I could go back to the trusty old arpeggiator MIDI device, which has actually had a nice makeover as of Live 12. I'm gonna shift tab back over to device view, then over in my MIDI effects section, I'm gonna find the arpeggiator and just drag that in front of my instrument. Okay, let's switch this over to the 16th mode and let's hear how that MIDI clip sounds with this arpeggiator playing. Okay, that's sounding good. If we want the arpeggiator to cover a greater distance, for example, move up into the next octave, we can increase the number of steps and keep the distance on plus 12. So now it'll play the original chord, plus it will add an extra octave above that. However, it's really not staying on any one chord long enough to get to those higher octaves. So let's join some of these chords together to turn them into a longer note. I'm gonna highlight all these chords and press Command J to join them together and do the same for the rest of the chords. All right, let's have a listen to that now. Let's listen to that with the rest of the tracks. All right, it's getting a little jumbled here, so let's pan some of the tracks around to make them stand out a little bit. I'll move the chords to the left and move the arpeggiator over to the right. Okay, 
okay, that sounded pretty good. Now, one little trick we can do to create a bit of cohesion between the drums and this arpeggiator line is to add a gate effect after my instrument device. So over in audio effects, I'm gonna find the gate utility, drop that after my instrument, and I'm gonna open the sidechain setting, turn on the sidechain, and tell it to listen to the audio coming from my drum kit. However, I'm only going to listen to the audio coming from the closed hi-hat track. Now, what this is effectively gonna do is close the gate, which is gonna stop the audio from playing whenever my hi-hat is not playing, which means I'll only hear my arpeggiated lead part while my hi-hat is playing. Let's see how that sounds. Okay, that's only a bit more interesting. Now, one issue with this is it can sound a little bit monotonous. So what I like to do is go back to my drum pattern here and grab these hi-hat notes and head back to the MIDI probability section down the bottom and just reduce the chance or probability of all of these notes. Which just mixes up the rhythm a little bit, makes it a bit less monotonous. Okay, overall, I think this is sounding pretty interesting. All I need right now is a nice synth pad track to glue it all together. Now we've given this meld instrument a pretty good workout, so I might go back to this wavetable instrument, which was first included with the suite version of Live 10. Now I'm only gonna look at the pad presets. There's a lot of really nice sounding pads here. I'm just gonna audition a few of them quickly. Okay, there's a lot of very pretty sounding presets, but I'm gonna stick with this one, the analog soft pad. And what I'm gonna do here is just drag my chords from this arpeggiated track over to my pad track. Now this is the MIDI clip that I've joined all the notes together, so I get a nice series of long sustained chords, rather than the rhythm I was using previously. So let's have a listen to that. I might try this arpeggiated part without the gate. And I might also modify the strum settings on this meld patch. Okay, that's about all I have for this video, so thanks very much for watching. Hope this has been helpful.